Start on hands and knees here and then lower all the way down onto your belly for some belly down arm stretching. Also great for shoulder opening. Reach your arm up on the diagonal, so higher than shoulder height. And start to turn so that you're laying down on the right side of your body and swing your leg back and across behind you. So take a look here if you're confused at all. Using the left fingertips for support. So this should be a nice opening through the front of the right shoulder and through the right arm. Keep an extended right arm. Spread your hand, spread the fingers, and press your right forearm and hand down into the floor. This is also a nice twist. Stay long through your belly. Let that left foot find the floor somewhere back there behind you. Smooth breathing here. Let gravity do the work here. Relax and release. And then come halfway out of the pose, just enough so you can change the position of your right arm. Now reach your right arm directly out to the right so it's at the height of the shoulder. Reach the arm even more to the right, tiptoeing those fingers to the right. And then come back into the pose, coming onto the right side of your body, swinging the left leg back and behind you, using that left hand for support. Spread the right hand and press the hand into the floor. Keep the right arm extending, lengthening. And breathe into the sensations here. See if you can become absorbed by the inner landscape of yourself, observing whatever arises. And now we'll do another arm position, same arm. Now we'll do a cactus arm, so the elbow will bend at a 90 degree angle, approximately, as you see here, and then swing your left leg across again. So each of these arm positions hopefully will change the stretch a little bit. Each arm position will stretch a different uh, line of fascia. Press your hand print into the floor. Press the whole forearm into the floor. And use the left hand to help you come a little more over onto your right side to deepen the stretch. And then release and come onto your belly and get ready to switch sides, reaching the left arm up at the diagonal. And lengthen your arm a little bit away from you too. And then swing your right leg behind you as you roll onto the left side of your body and enjoy that wonderful stretch across the front of the left shoulder and through that left arm. And let your attention be anchored by your breath and by your study and your exploration of sensations and whatever's arriving in this practice space.
Stay present here. And come halfway out of the pose and switch the arm position. So now the left arm will come directly uh, to the side of your body at the shoulder height. And then swing your right leg back and behind you, coming onto the left side of your body, using the right hand for support. Stay extended through the left arm. Breathing patiently as you relax and release and let gravity do the work here. And then come halfway out of the pose and come into cactus arm. And back to swing the right leg behind you, coming onto the left side of your body. Breathe into the sensations, breathe into any tightness, breathe into any discomfort. And take a deep breath here as you come out of the pose. And rest here on your belly, turning your head to one side, arms relaxing. And then turn your head to the other side. Now come to your hands and knees and have your blocks nearby for extended child's pose. So place your hands on the blocks at shoulder distance apart and have your knees at hip distance apart. And then bring your big toes to touch and take your knees a little bit wider and start to pull your buttocks back and down and then slide the blocks using your hands. Slide your blocks forward. Extend through the armpits and the waist. Extend the elbows and let your head release down towards the sticky mat. Lift yourself up a little bit now and stretch the front ribs forward to lengthen the abdomen. And think of the thoracic spine deepening into the body towards your chest as you lengthen, elongate the front of your trunk and release and relax your head down. Keep the arms active and lifting. Keep the outer hips pulling back and down. Breathing here. Smooth inhalation, smooth exhalation. And then inhale, slide your blocks back and come up to hands and knees. 
Now we'll do puppy pose. So grab a blanket so that your knees and shins have some padding under them. Start on hands and knees. And then start to walk your hands forward like down dog position. Pull your hips way up. The hips will be right over the knees here. So continue to walk those hands forward so that you're very long and extended and let your forehead rest down on the sticky mat. So it's very similar to dog pose. And now lift up onto your fingertips. Lift your chest a little bit, stretch your chest forward, stretch your bottom front ribs forward. Find a, lots of length through the anterior spine and then keep the arms lifting as you let your forehead rest down again, long through the armpits and the waist. Squeeze your upper arm bones towards each other a little bit. Breathe deeply here, enjoying this nice opening through the shoulders and the armpits. Long abdomen. And then come back up to hands and knees. Now lay down on your belly for Shalavasana. And one at a time, reach your legs back so that you set yourself up very long on the floor. Take your hands by your hips, forehead down, and then start to lift the shoulders up towards the ceiling. Lift your legs, lift the wrists, reach your chest forward, reach your legs back, and pull the arms back as you stretch your spine forwards. Anchor your tailbone down, lift the inner thighs, stretch the knees, open the toes, and lift those outer arms up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, release down, resting your head to one side. And then turn your head and rest the other cheek down on the ground. Release and relax the buttocks. And now come onto your belly for some cobra undulations. So make your way onto your belly and lengthen your right and left legs back one at a time so that you become very long on the floor here. And then have your hands alongside your rib cage, flat on the sticky mat, and lift the shoulders and outer arms up towards the ceiling. Let the elbows pull back and a little wide. Anchor your tailbone down, spread the toes open, internally rotating in the thighs. And think of the rib cage pulling forwards and up and start to lift the collarbones and lift the chin. Breathing here in the cobra. And then exhale and lower yourself down and let your head release down. And now inhale, roll yourself up into a higher cobra and let your head come up last. And then exhale, roll your spine back down, letting your head come down last. Inhale, using the arms, rolling your spine up, anchoring the tailbone. Lift the chest, lift the chin as you finish the inhalation. And then exhale as you undulate back down at the end of the exhale, chin to chest. And continue this way, creating length in your body as you undulate. Shoulders back, elbows pull back. And now we'll practice a higher cobra. So walk your hands forward a little bit on your sticky mat. Anchor your tail and start to lift the front ribs up. 
pulling the rib cage forwards as you lift the front of the spine up towards the ceiling. Let your shoulders go back. Press into your spread out hands. Come up a little higher and lift your chin. And then exhale and come all the way down. And now for Urdhva Hastasana with the block between the hands. So have the block between the palms and then lift the block up and overhead. Feet and legs organized underneath you. Thighs rolling in, thigh bones back. Lengthen up through the musculature of the legs. Lift the low belly, lift the rib cage. Lengthen through the sides of your waist. Lengthen through the sides of your spine. Keep lengthening up through the armpits, through the elbows, through the fingertips. Squeeze the block and reach the block and the arms back as you reach the shoulder blades forward. Keep the stretch of the sides of your body. Keep the stretch of the armpits and then pull your shoulder blades a little bit down your back so the top shoulder blades move down. Balance the head right on top. And then lower the arms down. Now we'll practice Ardha Uttanasana. So have your blocks in front of your feet, which are hip distance apart. Activate, energize the legs, thighs back, hands on hips, chest open, shoulders back. Lift from under the heart and then exhale, bend your knees as you crease at the hips and bring your hands to the blocks. So don't let the spine round at all here. Don't tuck the pelvis or tuck the chin, but rather bend your knees and lift the buttocks, lift the sitting bones, and stretch the front ribs forward to open the chest and look up. Widen the collarbones, elongate the belly, elongate the front of the spine. Stretch through the elbows, straight arms here. And keep those knees bent if it helps you keep the buttocks lifting. Stay grounded in the inner feet as much as the outer feet. Pubic bone reaches back, inner thighs reach back. Slide the front of the rib cage forwards and breathe here. Pull the outer hips back, pull the upper inner thighs back, pull the rib cage forward. Deepen the thoracic spine into the body towards the chest. And then release the hands down to the floor as you bend the knees deeper and fold deeply, taking rib cage towards thighs, releasing here. And then hands to hips, stretch the chest forward, shoulders back and come up. Now we'll practice side angle pose. Start in Tadasana with feet together. And then bring your hands onto your hips and step your feet wide. Have your toes pointing in so the heels are a little wider than toes. Long spine, shoulders back. And then turn the right leg all the way out and the left toes in a little more. Shoulders to the back of the shoulder sockets, long in the waist, and then bend the right knee deeply. Rest the right forearm onto the right thigh and get long from the left heel all the way through the top of the head. So the trunk is on a diagonal here, lengthening in line with the back leg, which is straight and extended. And then lift the left arm to the ceiling to help you open the left ribs. Think of lifting the belly to the ceiling. And think of grounding that right sitting bone forward towards the right groin. So the buttocks is not reaching back behind you. And then take the top arm all the way up and across, gazing at the top hand, and find a nice long line of energy from back heel all the way up through the top hand. And then inhale and lift yourself out of the pose, straightening the legs, hands to hips and change sides, turning the left leg all the way out, turn the right toes even more in, shoulders back, long spine, bend the left knee deeply, 
rest the left forearm onto the left thigh and open the right shoulder so that the front of your trunk is pointing straight forward. Long line from the back heel extended in the back leg and all the way through the spine through the top of the head. And then lift the right arm up, lift the belly to the ceiling, open the right ribs, drop the left butt cheek down and under you and ground the center of that left butt cheek forward towards the groin. Strong in the back leg, ground the right thigh back in space as you extend the knee and then take that top arm all the way across so that it continues that diagonal line gazing at the top palm. Strong in the back leg, very bent in the front knee, lift it in the low belly and turn the right ribs open towards the ceiling. Gather the left butt cheek more underneath you. And then inhale and come all the way up to straight legs, arms extending to the sides, hands to hips, feet parallel. Recover with an open chest and then step your feet together. And now we'll practice Ardha Prasarita Padottanasana and we'll do this with bent knees. So start in Tadasana and have your blocks ready. Take your hands to your hips with an open chest, lifted spine, and walk your feet out wide, heels wider than toes, legs energized and long, thigh bones back, lifted belly. Stretch your arms out to the sides. Active in the limbs here. Internally rotate the thighs and lift from underneath the heart. Ground through the inner feet and the outer feet. And then take your hands back to your hips, keeping the shoulders reaching back. And now start to bend your knees and fold at the hips. Bring your hands down to the blocks and don't round your back or tuck your pelvis here, but rather deepen the bend of the knees and lift the buttocks way up. Stretch the front ribs forward and let the thoracic spine deepen into the chest. So keep the knees bent here, which will allow you to find a, a true lift of the buttocks. Stretch the chest forward, extend through the arms. Elongate the anterior spine. Stay grounded in the inner feet. And then start to deeply fold down. You can keep your hands resting on blocks and move the blocks closer to your feet. Or if your hands reach the floor, you can rest your weight into your hands a little bit. Staying with knees bent, lift the buttocks, roll the thighs in. Release and relax the head down, release and relax the back ribs, side ribs, and front ribs down. Deep breath here. And then hands to hips, bend the knees deeper, stretch the chest forward, shoulders back, and come all the way up, thigh bones back. Lifting the spine and step your feet together. Now we'll practice Ardha Prasarita Padottanasana with a twist in the variation. So have your blocks ready on the highest height. Stand in Tadasana in mountain pose. Take your hands to your hips. Lift the spine from bottom to top and step your feet wide with the heels wider than toes. Internally rotate the thighs, ground the inner feet, pull the thigh bones back. Shoulders back and then stretch the arms out. Lift the side ribs and reach the right arm to the right and the left arm to the left. And then hands back to hips and then crease and fold at the hips, bending the knees so that you can lift the buttocks, lift the backs of the legs and lift the buttocks up. Bring your hands onto the blocks 
and then lift the left hand up towards the ceiling so that you come into a twist. Keep the knees bent, the buttocks lifted, the front of the spine long. Have a back bend feeling in the upper back and turn the belly on the rib cage. Lift the left arm and left shoulder up. And then exhale and come down. Rest your left hand on the block and lift your right arm up to come into a twist on the other side. Groins reaching back, buttocks lifting, front of the spine lengthening. Stretch the right arm up, stretch the right shoulder up and turn the belly, turn the rib cage. And then exhale and come down. And then hands to hips and stretch your chest forward and come on up. Now we'll practice a supported fish variation with two blocks and a blanket. So fold your blanket. This will be the padding for your head. And place a block down on the medium height and then have another block next to your sticky mat. So now you'll lay back so that the block on the medium height will be supporting you under your shoulder blades. And then lengthen yourself up and over the block so the head will come to the blanket and have the other block right between the palms of your hands. Release the flesh of your buttocks away from your lower back towards your feet. And reach the block up and overhead. Lengthen through the armpits and the elbows. And then start to stretch out your legs one at a time. And now, squeezing the block between the hands, you'll let the arms come up and overhead and lower the block down towards your pelvis. And then lift the block up and overhead, thumbs coming towards the floor. And then move the hands up and over towards the leg side. And again, take the block up and over towards the head side and continue moving like this, lubricating the shoulder joints. Stay extended in the elbows. Breathe length through the trunk. Be long in your abdomen. Let the abdomen settle. Let the thighs settle. Let the shoulder blades relax into the support of the block that's underneath you and continue with this movement. Squeeze the block that's between the hands. Nice smooth movement. Taking the block up and overhead and then up and over towards the legs. And then the next time the block is up and overhead, stay there, breathing, extending through the fingers and the toes. Breathing here. And now start to help yourself out of the pose using your hands to help you come all the way up. Now we'll do another version of supported fish, this time with a bolster and two blankets. So please set up as you see here. The bolster is horizontal and then you have two folded blankets and that will be for your head support. So lay back over the bolster so the bolster is supporting your rib cage. It's not under the lumbar spine. Rather, it's under the thoracic spine. And then pull the flesh of the buttocks away from the lower back. 
and the shoulders will relax into the gap between the bolster and the folded blankets and the head will rest on the folded blankets and start to extend and relax the legs let the arms relax right out to the sides let the abdomen settle let the shoulders relax here See if the shoulders can really let go because of all of this support that's here. Let the head and neck relax because they're supported by the blankets. Let the upper torso relax as it's supported by the bolster. Let gravity have an effect on the shoulders, releasing and relaxing. Slow down your exhalations here. Stay very present in this moment inside yourself. Observing whatever arises. Smooth inhalation. Smooth exhalation. And then start to come out of the pose by curling onto your right side. 